Grentham Academy, part seven. My Grentham Smart Home Control Application. Hello, my name is Marek Pollard and I invite you to the seventh part of our training, where you will learn how to create control interfaces for smartphones and tablets. Welcome. My Grentham, this is the name of the application that we use to control our system. What makes it stand out is the way we create it. In the Grenton system, what the control application looks like is entirely up to you. You can fully customize the appearance of the application to suit your preferences. We can change the button layout, and what's more, each household member can have their own application that works differently. To create this application, we have a very cool tool in the Object Manager, in which we simply drag various objects, throw them onto the screen as we want, and do it all very quickly and efficiently. The application can work on devices equipped with Android and iOS. And remote access to the system using the Grenton Cloud is also possible. This means that in order to be able to control remotely from your mobile application, you do not need to have a fixed IP address or buy any additional multimedia servers. All you have to do is connect your system, i.e. connect the CLU module to a router that has internet access and you can now enjoy access to your system from anywhere in the world. The application also sp supports the so-called push notifications. Push notifications are the information you see on your smartphone, sometimes without even having to unlock the screen. This is information about updates, calendar events, missed calls, and in exactly the same way, you will see notifications from your system. The system can notify you about any event. It can be a system failure, flooding, the occurrence of some alarming event. It can also be opening the door, changing the temperature, the appearance of a user at home, and many, many more. It really depends on you what events will generate notifications, i.e. what your system will inform you about. You can configure it very easily and quickly in the Object Manager. Creating interfaces for mobile devices is really very simple. We simply add a new interface, then we arrange the buttons in it, i.e. the objects that we want to control from our application. We add more pages, we arrange in the order that is convenient for us, and we simply send the interface. In that case, let's go to the configuration and see how we do it in the Object Manager. Let's open our system project and start creating our interface for mobile devices. Creating the MyGrenton interface begins with pressing the Add MyGrenton Interface button, your name, this interface. And it will be the name that will be displayed on the smartphone screen or in the interface list. So if you want to add more than one interface, it's worth ensuring they had different names so that they would be easily to identify them. And then put the buttons on our smartphone screen, i.e. those objects that we want to control. You catch, drop, and you can proceed to personalization, i.e. you can now change the icon of the object you will be controlling. You can change its name, a small remark at once. If you remember correctly, during the configuration and naming of objects, you could not use Polish characters or spaces. In the case of mobile interfaces, it is allowed, i.e. these mobile interfaces can be named completely differently than the objects on the tree. I.e. you change the name, you can enter here, for example, kitchen. You can now add more buttons and more objects. You can add them one at a time, but you can also do it in groups i.e. you simply select the majority of objects and drag them to our screen at the same time. And also, as before, you can name them exactly as it will be more convenient for us. And here we can also change icons for these objects. You can replace them with places. Which means you can rearrange them freely so that it is more convenient for us. You can change the icon for the whole page. So now we can decide how 
you will use this interface. Whether there will be different areas on each side, for example, lighting, heating, blinds, or will it be a room division? I.e. on one side all devices from the living room, on the second one all the devices from another room. For example, the kitchen, and you can add another page. Add a page by pressing the plus button. You can delete them in the same way. If you click on the cross, you will simply delete the page. And now if you would like to have the opportunity to start the light scene from our interface, do the script. It is exactly like in the case of lamps. You just catch the scenes that you want to insert into the interface. Insert, drop, and exactly as before, you could rename in a different way than in the configuration. You can change the shade or the icon you will use. In this way, you can personalize how this interface will look and for the next page. For example, in this case, we will group this interface with functions, i.e. on the first page, you will throw the buttons that will control the lighting. On the second, those buttons which, for example, will control the heating. You will also change the icon. and add radiators from our system to this page. And here, as in the case of lamps, you can also change their names, change icons, change the layout and order. You can switch to the next page, i.e. arrange them in exactly in such a way that is convenient to operate this interface. You can also change all icons for heating. If you wanted to be able to preview the temperature now, and maybe before I show the preview of the temperature, then see. The buttons or objects that you want to control you can add to the given page by dragging from the object. You can also set by adding a given object from the tray, just like you did in the case of scripts, i.e. creating scenes in the graphical interface. So for example, you choose the value component and you want to be able to read the temperature from a given room from your smartphone, i.e. simply insert a component, then double click it and now in the value field for the condition, choose the feature that you want to show. In my case, it will be the value of the temperature sensor. So I choose the temperature sensor from my list, the value feature, i.e. the value of the sensor, and I change the icon. And in this way, the interface on the smartphone will tell me what the temperature is at the moment in the living room. OK, I have my interface ready. Now in the settings, you can see what else we can do with this interface. You can change the icon on the list of objects. You can change the color for all icons. For example, set it in red and you can insert your logo, but it can also be a logo from the file you prepare. I.e., you can prepare your logo for all interfaces you can also prepare a logo for a given investment, which means you can personalize the interface even more. You still have the option of blocking access through the cloud, i.e. if for some reason you would like the interface to be able to communicate with the system only through a local network. Then in this window, you can check block access through the cloud, and then it will not be possible to connect via Grenton Cloud. OK, you have the interface ready, so at this point I would like to send it to the smartphone. I open the interface that I would like to send. Then select the send to phone icon, and after pressing this icon, a QR code appears. What we need to do now, open my Grenton application, 
press scan QR code. Of course, the phone must be on the same network as the computer, and that's really all. After pairing the devices correctly, you can check how the mobile application works. Now see, the interface has already been loaded, so it can't be tested, checked. You can see how fast it works. How we can control certain objects to also launch the scene that you prepared earlier. To be able to send the interface to a smartphone or tablet, you do not need to have this device at hand. You don't have to be on site and you don't have to have access to the client's device. You also have the ability to generate an interface and save it in the Grenton Cloud. How to do it? Click Share in the Cloud My Grenton Interface, then set the expiration date. This will be the date until which the interface will be stored in the Grenton Cloud. After this time, it will cease to be active. So you can prepare the interface, send it to the client, and they will have a specific time to download this interface. At this point, you download the link. Of course, at the stage of downloading the link, the computer must have access to the internet so that the computer can save the interface in the cloud. You copy the link to the clipboard and send it to the client or to a person who should have access to the system. Now see what happens. You open a web browser, paste the copied link, i.e. this is the link you sent to the client or to the person who should have access to the system. And after scanning the QR code, we'll receive the interface that you prepared earlier. If this link is open directly on a mobile device, if the Migrenton application is not installed on this device, it will be installed first and the interface will be automatically loaded directly from the Grenton Cloud. The interface you have now prepared will allow you to use your system by means of a local network, Wi-Fi network. If you wanted to use your system from anywhere in the world, using Grenton Cloud, you must first run the cloud on the CLU module. To this end, we open the CLU properties, that is, double-click CLU, go to the built-in tab, and you have such a feature as used cloud. You see my case, used cloud is set to false, so my CLU didn't get permission to connect to the cloud. You change to true, then send the configuration to the CLU module, and after restart, of course, provided that the CLU is connected to a router that has now access to the internet, the CLU will connect to the Grenton Cloud. Let's see. And now use the cloud is already set to true, but to make sure that this connection has been set up correctly, you have information below if there is a connection. So it is not enough that you set the use cloud feature to true. You must also be sure that this connection has been left because you can do configurations on a router that has no access to the internet. And despite that, you set the use cloud parameter on true, the connection will not be established. So you have to always make sure that the connection has the true parameter. At this point, CLU already allows you to use Grenton Cloud. So what do you do in the next step? You open the My Grenton application, go to Settings, choose the interface for which you want to configure connections, and choose the connection type from the menu for this interface. And now you can see there are two options here, local connection, i.e. access only via Wi-Fi network, and connection via cloud. You mark the connection through the cloud, come back, and at this point you can test whether the connection works properly. You turn off the Wi-Fi network, check if the data transmission is turned on, return to the mobile interface and at this moment you can check whether this interface will work using the cloud. See how fast the interface works on the remote system? 
At this point, smartphone is connecting with the system using the LTE network. And this connection is practically as fast as a connection in a Wi-Fi network. I will show you how to create push notifications in the Grenton system. Push notifications appear as virtual objects. So to add such a notification, you select virtual push objects from the list. Enter the name and then in the built-in features, you see a message and title here. As the title, enter failure and in the message field, enter the text that you want to display as a message, which in my case means flooding detected shut off water supply. See, you can immediately send such a message in the control and see how it will look like, but okay. Now you've created a push notification and would like it to be sent to the smartphone after some action. So now you choose what should initiate sending this notification. In this case, let it be a flood sensor. You choose what event to initiate it. Depending on what sensor it is, you have to adjust the appropriate event. But let's assume that when a short circuit is detected in the input, a flood is detected you would like to send such a notification. So you choose the notification from the list, select the send method, okay, and in this case, you are sending the configuration. So you already have the notification configured on the CLU module side. When the sensor detects flooding, it will send you the message. But now you still need to configure this notification on the application side. To do this, you enter the application settings and see that you have here a field with push notifications in the system. So you simply mark which notifications should be visible in your application. Then you send the application interface again, scan the QR code, and now see. After receiving the interface, when the sensor detects flooding, Oh, and now the message should appear on the screen of your smartphone. Thank you for your attention, and I invite you to the next parts of the training, where you will learn how to configure and start the heating in the Grenton system, or how you can control the blinds. See you.